Hey there, Alan Matthews here from Classical Guitar Shed, and in this video we're going to be talking about a way that you can make your music more musical. You can make it more exciting, more interesting, both to play and for people to listen to, and just a way to understand what it is that's going on in your music even better. All right, to begin with, let's just take a look at a piece of music so that we know what it is that we're talking about here. This is the Capriccio, Targa's Capriccio. And in classical guitar music, then we have melody, which are these upper notes, stems up. And then we have the accompaniment, which is all this other stuff and the bass and everything that is not that, right? So all of that. So we have a melody. And then we have our accompaniment. Is the accompaniment. So in a melody, more times than not, 98% of the time, short notes lead to long notes. So we have all these short notes right here, and all of these short notes right here lead to this long note. So the purpose then of all these short notes is to get us to the next long note, and oftentimes it's also to get us to the next chord change or whatever it is, but we want the music to always be moving forward. We won't, don't want this static thing. This is not interesting. Right? It's just repetitive. So we want it to, our notes to lead somewhere. Well, one of the things that we can do whenever we have melody notes leading toward a long note, and especially when they're even, uh, even notes leading to a long note, meaning not syncopated, then what we can do is we can take the last three notes and think of those as different as they, their real purpose is to get us forward to the other ones. The other ones before that are may or may not be, that might be their main purpose and maybe not, but the last three, their purpose is to get us to the long note. And one of the ways that we can remember to do this and also we can give more direction and drive to it is by using words. And the words that I like to use are, and then to hear. And so with and then to hear, then typically you will find a bar line at here. So here is the arrival point. Boom. We want the arrival to be here. And so then that means that and then to, the whole point of and then to, is to get us to here. So and then to here. And how you do that will be different depending on the situation. It might be a crescendo and getting louder to here. It might be getting softer. It might be accenting something. But the main point is that those three notes are not just part of everything that's come before. It's not just notes. It's three things that are setting up da 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 da, so that each one of them is its own is its own thing. It, of course, it's also part of a bigger thing. But the point of them is to lead to here the downbeat. Let's look at this and uh, and listen to it in context here. So with the Capriccio, then we can have and then to here and then to here. So it and then to here and then to here and then to here. So we da 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 we can move forward into those points and we can do that by thinking of those last three notes as really separated from everything that comes before it and part of this momentum towards the new one. Stop. And then to here. I wouldn't actually stop in, in when I'm playing it, but I would be thinking, and then to here. Those are the long notes in the melody. So let's take a look at another context for this. So this is the opening of Bach cello suite number one. And so we just have this steady stream of arpeggios, right? So if we just play it, it's a little bit static, right? It's a little bit repetitive and static. Instead, what we can do is certainly for the, um, for the new harmonies, then we can take those last three notes and lean into them to move to the new harmony. Now we can also do it just a little bit at the mid bar if we wanted to, just a, just a smidge, but not enough to actually accent it. Listen to it this way. 
and then to here, and then to here, and then to, and then to here, and then to here, and then to here. I'm kind of overdoing it with the mid bar, but uh, for each harmony, then we can lean into it, and it just leads our listeners to knowing. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Something's going on because we're saying it's like those last three fingers are a big finger pointing to the next thing. So as soon as we get close, we say, here it comes there. Here it comes there. So it just gives us that momentum going forward, especially in these pieces that can just drone on like an arpeggio piece. Further down this piece, um, this is the same piece, the Bach cello suite. Then we have this scale pattern. And then to here. So we have, and then to here, and, and then to here, and then to here, and here, and then to here, and then to here, and then to here. So at each harmony change and at each main point, you can use those last three notes to go ba 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 ba. And it might be a crescendo, oftentimes it is, even though the word here, on the word here, on the arrival point, it might be quieter or louder, depending on the context and how things are moving. But we can definitely use those last three as something special, bop, bop, bop. And on every single one of them, bop, bop, bop. How we, how we do it is going to change. But the main thing is that we separate those in our mind and make them into very role-based notes, and their role is to get us forward to the next thing. So, very exciting. If you can incorporate this into your music, if you go fast, I'm sitting here playing fast, um, but it, oftentimes it really helps to stop. Just give yourself a hard stop before those three notes, because chances are, if you haven't been doing this, then you'll blow right through them. Um, and you won't really separate it and say and then to here, even if you can get it out. But if you can stop and then say and then to here with your mouth, with actual sound coming out, then it will separate that in your mind. It's a practice technique. Um, and then to here. And then to here. And then to here. So that you separate that in your mind. Then you can put it back together and there will still be that separation built in there somewhere, but it won't be so obvious. You can see just start giving these little nudges here and there that would just lead the ear forward. So super fun. I hope you enjoy this. If you can incorporate this into your playing as a general thing, everything you play will be more beautiful. Absolutely guaranteed. All right. Have fun. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't and talk to you soon. Bye.